on to win 57 games, and he wound up leading the NBA in scoring over 30 points per game. So I think he pretty much called the shot. Got his own rebound again. Yeah, the man is possessed. The Hawks would win the Atlantic Division and cruise through the first round of the playoffs. Atlanta would have to play the defending champion Boston Celtics to move on. just will not surrender to the favored Boston Celtics. It's kind of a clash of two worlds. In Bird, you've got somebody who's already an icon. He's already been uh, sanctified as a Boston Saint. And Dominique represents a different kind of basketball. The frenetic Hawks, led by the Freakazoid, had old school Boston by the throat. Up three games to two in the best of seven series. All Atlanta has to do is go down to Atlanta and close the series out. We blew the opportunity. Johnson, the bird, high arc, yes. Lawson. I think in the last 10 seconds of that game. Livingston, no. Boston has won the game. Number 21 would need a win in historic Boston Garden for a shot at the title. Basketball, let it I'll never forget Zoe came in the locker room and said, we're going to win a bleep, bleep, bleep game. And if you're not going to fight, don't come up here. Game seven would go down as one of the greatest games in NBA history. Dominic was an unstoppable player. No guy could guard him in the league but man for man. You could see his competitiveness. You could see his determination in that game seven. There was only one player on the floor who could match his will. End of the third, Kevin Willis came over to me and said, don't let this son of a gun score anymore. Bird's eyes got this big. <laughs> I looked at Kevin, what are you doing? <laughs> and from that point, it was, it was a shooting match. Dominique had 47 points, but he was denied a final chance at 50. There's five seconds left for the miracle. And the foul by Ainge. We were down three, and Ainge runs and fouls him, rather than one more attempt at a three-pointer. That's how hot he was. That's how much he was in that zone. Ainge feared he might make a three and tie the game. He will quite obviously miss the second one. Oh, the miss, and that's it. He had brought the Hawks within seconds of advancing to the Eastern Conference Finals. It was as close as they would ever get. Nothing can ever take away the memories of the game he played that day. He was the best player in the game to never win the big one. But with fame came the chance to forgive the man who had left him behind. I heard that he was in Atlanta. I sent my son John to see if he could find him. He found him living in a uh, shelter. And I said, you got to bring him here. Suffering from diabetes, John Wilkins would spend the rest of his life surrounded by his family. He just wanted to you know, live life you know, and enjoy himself. And Maybe to a fault. Like father, like son. Zoe could like hang out all neck and see her come give you a hard 48 minutes. It's not too many people that have been through this league can do that. Yeah, I had a little bit of cash in my pocket back then. Uh, it was fun. And in Atlanta, I mean, I think there are, we were joking at the ratio, there are men to women, it was like 17 to one or something, women to men or whatever, and you know, I guess Zoe tried to get his 17, so to speak. By 91, he had fathered two daughters out of wedlock. One of the women would later accuse him of sexual battery. Everything that glitter isn't gold, and when you think you really know people or know a person, you really don't. Her complaint was thrown out, but she wasn't the only one to take him to court. 
His first agent, Jack Manton, sued Dominique, trying to reclaim money loaned to Wilkins during his days at Georgia. Dominique eventually settled the case without an NCAA investigation for $43,000. I think he got caught up uh, into college athletics at, the, at a time where nobody cared. Dominique, like his dad, would find himself at odds with his family. They're a very strong family, very tight-knit family. They want what's best for them, for sure, even though they may go about it in strange ways. Being that close is like, okay, you're taking him away from us. I was devastated, you know? He was my son that, that would die for me, and now I can't come to his house. Dominique Wilkins had two slam dunk titles. Now that's a 360 with just a little authority, folks. But he didn't have a ring. Instead, he had a reputation as an individual artist in a team game. Dominique Wilkins is a repeat champion. When you're a, a flashy player and you do a lot of dunking and that sort of thing, that sticks with you. They don't see the other parts of your game. And I tell people all the time, you know, you can't get 29, 30 points a game just on dunks. Jimmy! The human highlight film had led the Hawks to four straight 50-win seasons. Only to lose twice to Boston in the playoffs. Boston 118, Atlanta 116. You know, God only knows that if there was not a Boston team there, how many championships would Dominique have been able to win? Some wondered whether Atlanta could ever win it all. With Dominique in the lineup. When he is the man, the guy that has to get up 22, 24, 25 shots a night. Other people might look at it and say, this guy doesn't want to give the ball up. This guy doesn't want to share. January 28th, 1992. Dominique needs 33 points to top 20,000 for his career. But the crowning moment of a decade of dominance would have to wait. Dominic Walsh twisted the ankle. I think, I, I, somebody hit me or kicked me. I turned out to who kicked me? I turned around, no one was there. But he's in a lot of pain. Dominic nursing the ankle and I see him limping off. And I looked down at my foot, it was almost straight in the air. He'd torn his Achilles tendon. Dominique returned courtside an hour later, his leg in a cast. Why did I do that? I don't know why I did that. It was an emotional moment I'll never forget. And the team just... You see the tears coming out of guys. I mean, guys was literally crying in the locker room. And uh, that's when you know people respect you. Dummy's a strong person. He'll be back. Charles, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Damn, man. One thing, man. Unbelievable. There was no one near me. I just turned and just popped. You know, See, when they carried you off on the stretcher, I knew something was, I knew it was bad then. He was like, my career is over. And I was like, no, your career is not over. You're a healthy young man. You'll be able to come back stronger than ever. He faced surgery and eight months of rehabilitation within